What's up guys? Hi, Scott here from Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today I have five beginner tips for people getting started with countertop deep fryers. You know, I've been reviewing deep fryers here on YouTube for almost four years now. And these are some of the things I wish someone would have told me when I was getting started. Let's jump in with the first tip. They call these countertop deep fryers. I have found that they actually work better if you don't put it on your countertop, but you put your fryer on your stovetop. Now, why do that? These things put out a lot of steam and grease. And for example, if I were to use this fryer here on the countertop, the steam and grease coming out of this fryer would go up these cabinets. They would get all sticky. Uh, that steam and grease can get on your walls. It can get on your ceilings and make a big mess. If you put the fryer on your stovetop, you can use your ventilation, get that steam, that grease going up through the ventilation and cuts way down on the mess these things put out. Second tip, most of these fryers will fit on a rimmed baking sheet. Now, pretty much everybody who's ever used a fryer has made the mistake of bubbling over the oil, putting too much in there, something wet, the oil bubbles up and over. If you do happen to do that, and you have the fryer on a rim baking sheet that will contain all of that hot oil if you make a mess. Further, if you have an electric stove with coils or I have a gas stove here with metal grates, if you're gonna put the fryer on your stove top, that rim baking sheet gives a, a flat platform for the fryer to sit on. Tip number three, when you're cooking foods with a wetter type batter, and here I'm talking about things like hand dipped, Fried chicken, if you've got a buttermilk batter or maybe some fish or things like homemade onion rings where you dip the onion into batter and then put it in the fryer, do not put those directly in the basket. When you put a food with wet batter in the basket and then lower this into the oil, that batter will set up and fuse to the basket. It will be stuck like a duck when you take your basket out. You will have to rip that food to get it off of the basket. What you can do is go ahead and put the fryer down into the oil without the food in it, then take tongs and lay your food out into the oil, let it fry, let that batter set up, then use the basket to remove the food. So no wet batter in the basket. Okay, so if you're enjoying this video and finding these tips helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps out a lot around here. Tip number four, do not overload the basket with prepackaged frozen food items. One of the reasons we buy fryers like this is we want to use things from the grocery store like Orida fries, frozen chicken tenders, um, especially things like tater tots. You can fit a ton of tater tots in a basket like this if you really try. Those tater tots, my freezer is at minus two degrees Fahrenheit. If you fill this thing up with frozen tater tots at minus two degrees and drop that into your oil, the temperature of your oil is going to drop 100, 125 degrees and things are not going to cook properly. They're going to get soggy, they're going to get greasy while you're waiting for that oil temperature to rebound for that heating element to kick in and get that oil back up to your frying temperature. So it's much better to cook in two or three batches if you need to. Thin batches go one layer or at most a third to a half full on your basket. Don't overcrowd the basket or your food will not cook properly. And tip number five is to be as strategic as possible with your used cooking oil. We've got hyperinflation in grocery prices these days. The other day I saw a gallon of peanut oil for $18 for a gallon of oil. If you're not careful, you'll spend more on your oil than on the food that you're cooking. Now, oil can be used multiple times depending on what you cook. For example, a cleaner food like a french fry, hand cut fries, that's not going to impart much flavor or color change to a batch of oil. I typically get five, six, seven uses out of a batch of oil for those cleaner foods like french fries. Other foods, however, are almost one and done. Things like onion rings, jalapeno poppers, fish, um, hand dipped, uh, hand battered fried chicken. Those are gonna put a lot of odor and aroma and with the chicken, a lot of color change into the oil. Those foods are almost one and done. So what I do is when I open a new jug of oil, I write the date on there, I write what I'm cooking, and I make tick marks. For example, I've used this for fries three times already. Once I get up around usage number six or seven for those cleaner foods like the fries, 
Then I take that oil and use it for the one and done items, the fish, the jalapeno poppers, onion rings, that type thing. So if you're strategic and get multiple jugs going, keep track of what you're cooking in those, store them in your fridge if you can, and you should be able to get seven, eight uses out of a batch of oil. Now, do you guys have your own deep fryer tips? If so, make sure you post those in the comment section below the video. If I get a bunch of good ones, I'll make another video and get those out there. Look somewhere on this screen for links to other videos you might enjoy. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.